Hello and welcome back. Uh, that's right, we are in, what's this? Some sort of U Green prison. This is U Green stand here at IFA, and we've just watched the keynote speech that took place over on what stage 25, whatever they call it. Um, and predominantly, although they talked about a lot of stuff, they detailed what the last year of development, where they are in the NAS market, their hopes, their dreams, their products, families, and all the rest of it. Let's be honest, the main thing that took the focus was this. This is the IDX6011 Pro, their AI NAS. We actually talked about this last year with this device that they first showed off at this stand one year ago. And one year later, we've still not seen the software, right? We've seen a few demonstrations, but that's really it. Now, Ed here is the AI guy. He's the AI guy to me. He knows more about these things than I do, and he likes these things more than I do, frankly. Um, but what were your expectations from you, Green, about this? It's uh, obviously everyone is uh, expecting this to become the world's first true assistant, which is going to be private, locked in your office yeah. or in your bedroom. No one has access to it. It has its own intelligence. It, you can ask any questions to it, and it's going to give you answers. No one else has access to it. Like, that's the dream they're trying to sell. Obviously, it's been a year. I think it's not that long time for creating something unique in the market True. that doesn't exist. But I think, I feel that they are getting there to deliver, actually. See, I'm, it's not that I'm not convinced, but I've not seen enough of the user interface. I've not seen, there's been a few things that we've kind of been shown in the background, a little bit of the development. None of which, by the way, we saw being revealed here at the stand. They've got little snippets of stuff in, in little corners. They've got a demonstration there at the back. Um, but we'll circle back to the AI now thing in a bit, because I took notes throughout the whole presentation. Some of it, I'm sure there'll be clips throughout the course of this video. Um, but there were things like the, a collaboration uh, between Ugreen, Intel, and Adobe. That was quite impressive. They had like a few people talking there. Um, they had a music production specialist, uh, an official Adobe representative, a 20-year vet of IT in there as well. And again, um, they, they had the muscle, they had the bones there, but they still didn't show off any of the features and services. They detailed some of them, which we'll get onto in a moment, but from that half an hour presentation that you saw, and again, I'm sure bits of it are gonna be in this video, what, we, what was your vibe on that? Uh, that means that they are taking things very seriously, because it will be very easy to release something without thinking, and then, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then it's open to vulnerabilities. Something, if anything bad happens to this product it, during the development uh, phases, that's going to be a bad name for the rest of the uh, um, future. So for that reason, they have introduced uh, Intel and Adobe and other big players in the market just to understand how to work together and, and build this product, which is going to be flawless, which is just going to work perfectly. So it, there's no... Uh, bad things happening to it. And if you talk to any editor, they'll tell you they have more footage than they have time in the day, right? And it takes more space than they have space to put it. So when you combine those two things, the NAS is a huge amount of storage for all my video, and now I can use AI to search and find those moments. We're helping editors, you know, I would like to say we're helping editors get home to their family sooner. And from the Adobe representative, the big takeaway from what he was saying, and I spoke to a couple of people just afterwards and just on the way to the stand here, the big takeaway there was about the reinvention of the workflow. So a lot of the time when we talk about NAS devices, we're talking about basically simplifying things. None of your USBs knocking around, you want a nice, simple, create your work, dock it, store it, work on it. And the idea is, is where does AI fit into that and how people use it on remote access services and using cloud platforms and just how much of that these guys can cram into this. Um, so again, reinvention of the workflow, responsive storage, natively searched storage, and intelligent storage is kind of what they banged on about quite a lot. Um, and as good as that is, I was more interested in the second half when they were talking about stuff like unusual behavior detection. I liked that. As some, something of a tech head, I like the idea that my NAS will be intelligent enough to start seeing usage patterns, and even when there is unusual patterns, and then be reactive, alert a system admin. That's something we've sort of seen on a hard drive level and a file access level, but this is on a much broader whole system wide level. Again though, we, they still didn't show it. And it just feels, I don't wanna see a paper release. I don't wanna keep hearing about the things one year on that this device can do, show me it can do those things. I think. 
I think they are working from a customer's point of view first, which I think this is something unique in the market as well. Because normally every single previous NAS uh, that existed in the market was always made by engineers, by professionals. So they are always were thinking to create this amazing product from their perspective, which turned out to be too complicated for a normal consumer. Now they are turning things around and they are trying to look from customer's perspective and they are creating this dream. And there is a saying, shoot for the stars, at least you're going to land on the moon. And this is what's going to happen. They might uh, oversell the idea, but they are heading the right direction. They are working from customer's perspective. So I think they will deliver. I, I acknowledge the way they are presenting it. I will also say as well, and I'm, I'm sure you've been watching this, but there was a whiff of the synologies about it. There was a whiff of the presentation of a Synology. It was, we've been to enough of Synology's events and the way they talk about here are our sales. Well, I mean, even behind us here, the sales figures, here's our market share in the German market. I think it was a 10% market penetration and recognized globally. It was the, there, was, there was a sense of legitimacy to this brand and this build of NAS that really up until now, only Synology was trying to output in terms of their vibe. But you're right, screw this product up. It's, it's a big ask, because this is not a cheap product. You may have noted, we have not talked about the hardware specifications, because I've already discussed the hardware specifications on two videos. I've seen this device at two different trade events, and I've still never seen the sodding thing turned on. But still, it's got that Intel Octa-Core processor. It has a crap load of RAM. It has 10 GBE. It's got USB 4 connectivity. It's got Oculus. It's got, it's, um, th this isn't a bad solution. And I also know there are going to be users that when this inevitably goes to crowdfunding, which I believe it will, they aren't going to buy it for the AI stuff. They're not. They're going to buy it for the hardware. And that's good and that's dandy. But it's the level of the AI integration that I would like to know more about and how it's going to be materialized. Throughout the course of the presentation, I was making notes of things that I wanted answers for. Some of these answers, by the way, were provided since that presentation. So whether you were there or not, I mean, these are my big takeaways. So what is the interface? Because you, I mean, you use quite a lot of AI services in your data, way more than I do. And when you use them, how many of them are you entering text into a search bar and how many of them are organic in the background? Right. Luckily, everything is uh, now uh, type in. I don't understand your question. But like a chat window, do you go into like a chat window to ask the AI a question or do you trust the AI to give you the information before you ask? I presume the former. Uh, you start with the question, obviously. Sometimes if AI detects that you are not asking the right question, it will help you out. Mm -hmm. So it will guide you through the question processes, which is not always as easy as it might feel. Mm -hmm. So the AI should assist you sometimes as well with your decision -making. So soft assistance, and that's my point. Integration of AI in a system like this, whether it is for quick file access, semantic search, organic search results, analyzing what the system is up to at a given time, or if I ask a question of this system for a kind of data, or a specific piece of data, or a collection, a filed category of data, I, if, I, if it gives me bad results, it would be lovely if it then turns around and goes, huh, I don't quite understand what you're saying, did you mean it, and actually have a conversation. I don't know if this system's gonna provide that. Yes, they were mentioning on the stage saying that the AI will be detecting uh, uh, dodgy sort of uh, questions. For example, if someone's asking, give me all the pictures of the lakes, the AI will think like, and will ask you, do you mean also ponds and other bodies of the water to be displayed? So it will guide the customers through the search Again, process. I, I just wish they showed it doing that. For example, you know, bring me that video that John talks about the budget this year, right? As you can tell, I'm speaking in my natural language, like I'm speaking to a person. So basically that is where really the, the AI comes in and really understands what I'm talking about and the AI NAS will fetch me that video. Secondly is that this is gonna be also your personal uh, data librarian. A lot of us also as we go on to many years of collecting our videos and files and documents, it gets really, really messy, right? And we don't organize them, we just need them, we dump them in there. This is basically using AI to classify people, objects, it can be text, it can be any, any kind of sentiment as well. 
and it classifies and organizes these for you. You're still going to be able to have your choice of third-party open source AIs, but it still comes down to that question for me, and I know you think I'm being really negative, it's just, it's been a year. I wanted to see more of this device doing stuff, and when they do integrate these AIs, it's one thing to provide an AI or for it to support popular language models like ChatGPT, like DeepSync, uh, DeepSync and more, but that, that's just the engine. They are building the car, the doors, the locks, the wheels, all of that stuff, and I want to know that the users that buy this for that AI service to make it easy so they can take advantage of those things with their data locally, remember, well, that's what I want to see. Yeah, that's why they're mentioning that uh, pre-set uh, or uh, preset language model is going to be their own model. So obviously they are now working on training that model. So it's going to be made custom made for this NAS system because not always you can rely on third-party AIs because they keep on changing or they become dated if you use them uh, unupdated for mm. too long times. And also, you don't know how safe those AIs are. For example, DeepSeek, there's lots of controversy going on. There's nothing. There are certain LLMs that you can get around. Mm. You can ask questions that hucks kind of behind the question. And you yeah. could retrieve data which normally wouldn't be allowed. You can, when ChatGPT was just released, people were getting knowledge what normally wasn't allowed. And they had to block these things down. And this is only possible with a custom-made AI. So for that reason, they are, I hope they're going to be updating it as well as they go. But uh, this is a safe way to start this thing. But when you mention about a custom-made AI and frankly the wraparound for people to be able to interface with it, that leads neatly onto my other point, security access and settings and directories. So for me, a NAS that's got some sort of all-powerful local AI system it come, security means two things. Number one, I want to be able to say what areas in the system this AI can access. I don't want to have the AI and it's got carte blanche across all of my data. Now they did say security settings and security management will be available, but they didn't elaborate enough on that for me. And the second thing was sensitivity and content filters. So for example, on my phone, I've presumably got a billion squillion photos. I've got photos on my passport. I'm here in Germany, just in case. I've taken a photo of my passport. I hopefully will delete it. I might not. Eventually, I'm going to upload this to this. And if I have uploaded all my photo roll onto this, and there's five users accessing it, maybe I don't want them accessing that photo. Now, yes, I shouldn't put it in a directory that's public. Fine. But how many millions and squillions of photos are you going to be uploading from screenshots to more? And the idea that I know several different LLMs and AI models, and indeed I know another NAS that uses an AI system, that allows a user to have content filters to say, these are things I never want to be shared. There will be confidential information I don't want shared, types of sensitive information. That to me is security. It's, you can't access these, fil these uh, um, uh, directories and this information, I want this information not used. So in the same way you would have the duplication, where you would have photos where it's like get rid of the dupes, the system clearly would have an ability, as it already currently does in its photo application, to see a list of all of the kinds of photos of data that's on there. What I want is the ability for it to go, I know that is photos of passports, I know that is birth certificates, I know this is legal documentation, I know this is a bank card, I know this is sensitive information, hide it and move it into a secure directory and it'd be intelligent enough to do that. I want to see that. But, I mean, really that was it. And system control was the last one. I mean, the idea of being able to control the system, because you highlighted it, the design of this device is meant to be about taking it out of the hands of engineers and tech heads and into the hands of people who don't want to have to learn a computer degree to use their system. They want to ask it organic questions and to get easy access back. And a lot of that doesn't just go to file filtering and file searching and more. It's about controlling the system. So I want to be able to create user groups, shared areas, encrypted areas of storage, power again. If, they, if this system has got access to 365 days of logs of everything from hard drive getting too hot to the CPU getting a bit hot to a hard drive getting wobbly, I want it to be able to interpret those locks and tell me when something's amiss. I mean, exactly. that's what I want. Yeah, exactly, because it looks like they are uh, talking to all 
the people that know their stuff in the industry. Mm. And honestly, it looks like they're also looking at the competition in the market, like Unify Unas, because they just introduced as well this prediction model. They are scanning all of the logs, what is dangerous, what is uh, potentially dangerous, and they are stopping those acts in, in before they take action. So they are they are doing these things, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that happening. I mean, ultimately, a year on, I'm still pleased you are in the market. In a market where certain NAS players have proven, at least in the eyes of some, to be, be unreliable, or that people wanted another option, I think it would be fair to say, and I mentioned this in another video, that you Green have capitalised upon that. And right now, it's you know, they're very early in the market, they've never really had a security incident to speak of at the moment, or to at least us to see the measure of their metal, to see how they'll handle one. But at least now, they haven't put a foot wrong yet. And that's what the big gamble is with this. They, if they screw the pooch on this, all of that goodwill, all of that good tidings will like vapor. Yes. And that's why I am, I'm not disappointed by this, I'm disappointed that there isn't more of this device and what it can do being shared. Yeah. And but I think they need to get on that. You can say it takes time to crack an egg, I know, but I want to see this has been a year they first revealed it. They must have some idea about where they're going with it. They will figure out that this is the first product of the kind in their history. They have a long history of delivering all sorts of products. So they have the structure. They know what steps need to be done. So this NAS is a big, big ask. It's a big product to, to release. But they are going to follow the steps to deliver the product. So they have a history. They have a proof behind that they can deliver and they will deliver, deliver again. Okay, well... Fingers crossed in a year's time, I look like a fool in this video, fingers crossed, but we'll have to wait and see. But thank you so much for watching. This has been you Green, uh, IFA and their AI NAS, and of course, their big old expo over there. Hopefully, we'll have one of these in the studio to play with. By the way, it weighs an absolute ton. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. What would you like to have seen from this at the expo? Maybe you were at IFA. Regardless, let us know in the comments. But apart from that, thanks for coming in. Thanks for everyone else. There's a chat waving us, <laughs> looking at us through the bars there. Yes, there's bars. Um, and we'll see you next time.